uh, have a presentation on um, metallic copper and human health. Um, this gentleman contacted me by email, found out what we're doing at the conference, stopped by to chat, found out what he was into. He happens to be local. And when he started talking about copper, um, I'm into all kinds of copper stuff from rings to you, na <laughs> you name it. So uh, it's one of my uh, favorite subjects. Um, Abner Weintraub is a national authority on uh, HIPAA, the U.S. law protecting health data privacy. Is everybody familiar with HIPAA? The reason you probably know about it or the reason probably your doctors and other health professionals even know about it is because uh, his business was basically educating virtually all the medical professionals in the nation on HIPAA. And he did that for a long time. And he uh, also uh, founded and sold companies like Commerce Pay, DynaSearch. So he's been involved with a lot of technologies over the years. Um, Abner has also worked for Lucent Technologies and Sprint United Telephone. And uh, he possesses a vast library of relevant items in his field of interest. And his most uh, recent work is working with metallic copper, which he considers his most significant contribution. Please help me welcome Abner Weintraub. Thank you. Thank you. Mic check? Good. We're good to go. Thanks for attending today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, everyone in the room familiar with copper, right? Who's not? Most of you being in scientific and technical endeavors use copper in your work. Copper rings, copper coils, copper wiring. Well, my subject today is metallic copper because copper is also a micronutrient. We need a certain minuscule amount to be healthy. But I'm here today to talk about copper and I'm going to tell you right now as I begin, most of you in the room, most people I talk to think they know copper pretty well. Well, Element 29 on the periodic table, very electrically conductive, soft in pure form, blah, 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 blah. We know copper. We use it all the time. But I'm here today, and I'm about to show you that I'll bet you don't know a few things about copper that are highly important. In fact, they rise to the level of urg urgency or perhaps magic, and I'll explain in just a moment. So bear with me. I'm going to give you a little bit of background and some context about copper. And this, in fact, is my first public disclosure of the information I'm going to share with you today. I've been on a, a path with copper metal for about four and a half years now, and I've been in stealth mode. So you are the first individuals other than my immediate family to learn this information that I'm sharing today. And I believe it fits in with the uh, impetus behind the ESTC group, uh, basically thought leaders working together for energy independence, uh, health and technology, obviously part of that and that can overturn the antiquated beliefs uh, that have kept us in bondage. My presentation today, you'll see, certainly fits that category. And in fact, that may sound dramatic, but it's absolutely true, and you'll see why in a few minutes, what I'm about to tell you today may actually save your life or that uh, those of your family and friends. Uh, the, only, the only problem with it being more widespread is that the, the hospitals and clinics all have invested a lot of money in their stainless steel fixtures and they expect to get 10 or 20 years of life out of the stainless, they don't want to lose the investment. So everything should be copper to kill the germs. And it's basically about, about touch surfaces. And these are all the places, I've mentioned some examples, that human beings touch. Doorknobs, handrails, elevator buttons, countertops, those sorts of things. There's an endless list because humans tend to touch everything. Our opposing thumb and our hands are one of our great advantages in the world. So, um, these touch surfaces have become the focus of copper research and the fact that copper kills germs. Every, everything is about the touch surfaces, and the researchers in the field are trying to convince hospitals, clinics, and medical facilities to change out stainless for copper. Germs can live for weeks or months on stainless steel. They die rather quickly on copper, as you'll see in a couple of minutes here. So, not only does Copper kill germs, and silver does as well, but in case you were wondering, copper is orders of magnitude more powerful than silver in terms of its germ-killing ability. Um, copper also destroys the DNA, the RNA, and the entire genetic code uh, of all these bacteria that it kills, so there's no resistance theoretically possible, and none has ever been observed. Uh, forming because of the use of copper to kill germs. That's totally contrary and different than using antibiotics. Antibiotics, cross-contamination uh, cross of genetic material leads to resistance developing over time. Bacterial biofilms, one of the biggest threats from bacteria, they're highly resistant to cleaning, 
bleach even, many different ways that we try to get rid of them, biofilms can actually thrive rather than decrease on low doses of antibiotics. Up to 90% of antibiotics pass through the human body without metabolizing. So we pee them out and they go into the water streams. Um, once antibiotics are present in waterways, resistant genes can be transferred among bacteria, including pathogens, via horizontal gene transfer, which does not happen when copper kills the germs. In science today, it's all about the touch surfaces. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm about to share my discovery with you right now, that we are missing something incredibly huge about copper. Well, I got my first chance to test this idea uh, end of 2019 going into 2020. I was telling a buddy of mine in Florida on the phone about my discoveries with copper back at that time, and I didn't even know everything then that I do now. And, I, and uh, my buddy Rick said, Abner, uh, I've got a friend with a horrible case of MRSA. The doctors have been trying to cure him for 10 years. Now they're recommending amputation of both his arms. And Rick asked Larry if he'd be willing to try some copper on his MRSA infection. Got a call the next day from Rick. He said, sure. He said, send it down. So... Day zero, no copper yet. Uh, Larry chose a wound easy to reach, right in front where he could see it clearly, uh, and started with the copper. Day three, this goes for 22 days, and, and we're skipping over some days here. There are only six slides covering the 22 days. Well, Larry had MRSA all on his upper body. Over the next few months, he used the copper on it, and he is 100% MRSA-free. It's never recurred since. I told him, he said, my doctors are going to want to know what the hell happened. And I told him, tell them you chanted or waved crystals. Because I'm in stealth mode and I'm not ready until I study the legalities and what's really happening here. I'm not ready for the world to know about this. This was a couple of years back, as I mentioned. 